Okay, now I'm going to show you a Signature 310. Chaparral introduced this boat last year. This is the first mainstream cruiser based on our 42-foot Premier. And it incorporates many of that Premier's uh, innovations, if you will. But let's not talk about those innovations for a second. Let's talk about regular plain old stuff, like being able to get on the boat because there's a grab handle right where you need it. Having big enough cleats. Now look at that cleat. I mean, I don't, wouldn't do it, but it's almost like you could pick up the boat with the doggone thing. There's one there and there's one there. See, so you can tie up at a fixed pier or a floating pier. Depends on whether you want to walk off the boat this way or you want to walk off this way. This is the mount for your grill. And your grill mounts in here. So see, here's your grill and here's your shore cords. And there's the bracket for storing uh, the grill's uh, pole support. And you go under here, and oh my, here's the storage for your fenders and your flag and your spare lines. But the best part is, this whole thing is on an electric motor and it slides forward. So you could even sleep on this if you wanted to. If you don't have to, why not instead sit right here and put a cold one right in that cup holder and watch the kids play. That's what I'd like to do right now. There's gas fills on both sides of the boat. And that way you don't have to remember where you're pulling up to the dock. Okay, once again, if you're tying up in a fixed pier, tying up in a fixed pier, then you're going to be getting on and off by the side. So they have step-ups to do that. There's a cockpit table that side mounts here. Storage. A refrigerator in the cockpit that's bigger than the refrigerator in our competitor's cabin. Uh, and okay. don't make me go there. House batteries on. Here's our sink, with our telephone type faucet. Chaparral always uses. Ah, that's your waste basket. So see, and you can grab the waste basket out of here. You know, but what about cooler storage? You bring a cooler on the boat, where does that go? Oh, right here. There you go. So load that cooler before you get on the boat. Now, how does Chaparral use a great big hard top like this when a lot of our competitors use something that, I don't know whether you call it a hard top or a spoiler, but whatever it is, it's tiny and minuscule and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do or or kind of looks like it's supposed to do. I don't know. It's got meat cross-eyed. But they put a hatch here, Chaparral does. Because a lot of people don't build that hard top because they can't figure out how to get you to the bow. And you know, it costs money to put another hatch up here instead of just having the two pieces of fiberglass. Well, Chaparral's going to spend that extra money because they think that you're going to want to get up there without hitting your head. And they're right, believe me. Okay, now check out this dash. Here's the, oh my god, 5212 touchscreen. Beautiful, huge Garmin unit. Trim tabs right here with indicators. And they're Lanco tabs, not those crazy uh, Bennett tabs. Now check this out. Look up here. Okay. Oh, they're white. Ooh, I'm at the dock and I want to be cool so they're blue. Oh, I'm navigating at night, but I want to read the charts so they're red. That's the kind of thought that this boat has. This is called a battery parallel switch. If one of your batteries is dead when you try and start up, you hit that switch and you start your motor instead of going through a bunch of BS. Okay, now, slide out screen, nice step up to the bow. When we walk down here, I've heard some people say that this is reminiscent of a layout that Sea Ray had at one point. And you know what? It is. With one exception. This one is more practical. It really works. And I'll tell you why. The first thing is, this comes up on a motor. So all you do is you just scoot this out, up this comes, you've got a nice wide berth, and you've got a long enough berth. It's 74 inches long. 
My wife and I have slept on this boat. My wife is taller than I am. We both fit just fine. You can sit a bunch of people around this table, but you can still get past each other. If you go to some competitor's boats, they'll have a bench on this side and a head on this side, and you can't get to the mid cabin compartment with the table up. You know, things have to work. It's, it's okay to have something, but it also has to work, okay? TV swivels back and forth. Nice big old TV. Oh my good. Here's your DVD player. Here's your Clarion stereo system with amp. Here's your microwave. Here's your stove. Here's your other big refrigerator. Here's a nicely done silverware drawer. More storage right here. Head compartment is very practical. I can pretty much stand up in this head compartment. You know, it's meant obviously to have a shower. Look, there's a fiberglass lid for the toilet so the toilet doesn't get wet if you're using the shower. You know, it's a shower if you've got a vent fan. Does the other boat you're looking at have a vent fan in the head? Maybe not. Okay, here's your mid cabin. Now, this mid cabin has this level of headroom all the way back here. Okay, and you fill this in, and you've got a TV with a DVD back there that's got plug ins for PlayStation, whatever else you want to have. You know, air conditioner is behind this step, and that means you're never slipping on the air conditioning compressor. And that's something that happens an awful lot with these boats. They put an air conditioning compressor on. You pull that out, that's your CD storage tray. Storage. There's even little hooks if you want to hang a little something on it. Storage right here. And look how easy to clean. This boat has a fiberglass liner in the in the ceiling and, and all over the place and teak and holly laminate flooring. The boat is made to get wet. It's a wonderful, wonderful, fast, comfortable, heavy-duty, beautiful boat. I love it.